What's up, metalheads? This is Norman Skinner of Imagica. You're listening to The Metal Meltdown with Dave Softy on Metal Messiah Radio. Alrighty, Metal Maniacs, here we go. Please help me welcome back to the Metal Meltdown on Metal Messiah Radio, the man with the chameleon voice, that is the Metal Chameleon, that is the front man of, of Skinner and Magica, Hellscream, and much more. Let's hear it for Mr. Norman Skinner the uh, Third. And you had to put the third in there, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thanks for having me back, brother. Uh, it's always a pleasure, and I'm glad that we could do this. I know with my schedule... Uh, I wish I could have done this a couple of months ago with you, but I'm still working and didn't have the time. But uh, we're just getting started with the Metal Meltdown season 12 on Metal Messiah Radio, and I, I don't forget my brothers. And uh, it's great to have you here again. And uh, just want to you know, talk about all that we can talk about. It's it's great to have you back, like I said. And uh, you have always have lots of things going on. Uh, you, I want to call you. Like, you know, Lance King, he's in like a million bands, and you pretty much have held your own by doing a lot with a variety of different bands. And I never thought Imagica would ever come back for one thing. 
And then I saw this new uh, logo design on on Magica's website uh, or uh, on their Facebook. And I go, hmm, that's interesting. Are they going to reform? And I think someone let the cat out of bed before anyone was supposed to know about it. I don't know, <laughs> but I mean, you were great in Magica. That was before Skinner. That's actually you, you yep. started Skinner after all that. But those those albums you did with Magica were just amazing, really killer stuff. Okay. So uh, yeah, when I heard Magica's back, I says, oh. The interview's coming. When we could do it, I don't know, but <laughs> got to do it. And then I, the Hell Scream album came out again with, uh, with you and David Garcia. And so, yeah, that's always great to have you on the show because we always have so much to talk about. Yeah, those are uh, that. The Hell Scream album was my 14th release, and the Magic Mix number 15. So. Yeah, I've definitely, I definitely stay busy. That's for sure. So, not, not too many people can say that they've released fifteen studio albums worldwide. You know, so. And you're just getting started, really. <laughs> yeah, I got a, another two. I got one being mastered right now for Navian, and one being a track for Skinner. So, and then another third, uh, two more being written. So, at least two albums, hopefully in 2020. Now, you were mentioning before the interview that you consider Navian your primary band. Absolutely. So um, to kind of tie it all into a magica to kind of get back to what you were talking about, um, it was definitely Steve who, who let the cat out of the bag. He was a, a little anxious for sure. Um, I'll just tell you kind of how it came about. And then uh, so when 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 a magica, you know, when we left, I left a magica in October of what, 2006 or 2010. Sorry. And it just it was time. You know, we were all sort of pulling apart in different directions. Our drummer had relocated to Florida and had a falling out with Steve. And um, we had a rotating door, a revolving door of uh, second guitar players that were just in and out of the band all the time. And um, I, I just wasn't feeling it, honestly. I was burnt out after the Portrait album and the tour didn't go as well as I wanted it to do. So I, when I parted ways, then we, uh, I think Steve took it personally. And we had a big falling out, as you know, and if everyone in the media knows there's a lot of dirt slinging back and forth. But um, fast forward, um, his Ben Kill Ritual was uh, doing a tour, North America tour with Ice Earth in a sanctuary. And um, the our bass player, uh, Jim Pegram, happened to be filling in for Kill Ritual. and He's also was in Skinner. So he was sort of the mediator, I guess, during he was trying to get the band back together for years. And uh, so Steve and I ended up running into each other at that show in Sacramento, had way too many drinks, um, sort of buried the hatchet, so to speak. And then after he was done with that tour, he had kicked me some uh, couple tracks and was like, hey, you know, check these out and see what you think. You know, I get asked all the time to bring back a Magica, but, you know, and I know you mentioned you do too. Yeah. So I listened to the songs and they were cool. And I just, um, you know, all the fans can blame me. I'm, I'm sort of the one that's uh, drawn the line um, and, and had all of these uh, conditions on doing this album. So I said, you know, as long as it's fun, uh, there's no pressure, uh, stuff like that. You know, just it, it, I have no problem doing another album or two or three or four and just kind of keep it going. So that was the deal. And, that album, he had the music pretty much ready to go. And within two months, I wrote, recorded, and sent everything out uh, to him to have it. There. So the album turned around from the time he sent me the songs to the time he got it, it was two months. Wow. So he made it very easy for you. And yep. the end product is, is phenomenal. And I'm, I was looking at the Metal Archives, and I found out, I didn't really know that, that King Diamond drummer Matt Thompson is actually the drummer on the recording. He is. And that came about because, um, as you know, uh, the last, I think, four, uh, I might be wrong, but I think like the last four uh, Magic albums were all uh, engineered by Andy LaRoque from King Diamond. So he also did all of the Kill Ritual stuff that Steve, uh, for Steve's band, Kill Ritual. So he had already hit up Andy and said, hey, you know, I need someone to do some drum tracking. I don't really have a, a permanent drummer. Um and Matt was on board. I don't know if he ended up paying him. <laughs> he probably did. <laughs> but uh, so he went ahead and did all the drums on it. Um, it was after that that uh, Steve asked me, he said, hey, you know, 
this kid that I got in Cure Ritual, Seamus Gleason, is very good. He's solid. Uh, I'd like to get bring him in to do any live potential dates and future uh, magical recordings. And I said, okay, I trust you, man. Whatever. If you think he's good, by all means, you know, I'm just here to write and sing. And, you know, as long as the music sounds good, I'm fine with it. But uh, one of the other conditions that we talked about was uh, you, when a band reforms, everyone's like, oh, my God, that band's back. And they're expecting all these big things. With the magic, it's a little different. Um, a decade's passed. We both have established projects already. So Kill Ritual is still his number one project now. And Navayan is my number one project, but uh, Magic it takes more of a backseat. We will write and record and release albums, but that's going to be ongoing. He's already prepping the new batch of songs for me to receive. Um, mm-hmm. But as but as far as touring goes, it either has to be a festival where we're playing for a decent amount of people in one shot, or it has to be a very significant tour. Um, regular lower level tours you won't see the magic of doing because we're going to of course be saving that time energy and money for our own projects oh i see so it's either yeah. go big or go home with that. exactly for live dates um gotcha. most likely you'll see us on some festivals that's uh probably the given and if uh some big tour happens to you know happen or land in our lap then perhaps some of that as well that's interesting well, let's learn yeah. more about the actual recording process Sure. You explained about the, the writing process, and he made it very easy for you, Steve. Did. And uh, where was this music uh, recorded? Where was it mixed, mastered, and produced? Okay, so uh, we all, I mean, we're all veterans now, so we've built our own recording studios and our homes and stuff. So everything was tracked, I believe, um, in, in, our, in our own individual studios. I don't know where Matt Thompson tracked, um, if he has his own studio or if he went somewhere to do it. But um, I know that Steve tracked all the bass and guitars at his uh, studio. I've tracked, God, like the last six albums I've done, I've tracked here in my studio, including this one. So it was uh, all those tracks were flown in. Uh, Steve, I think, did an overall mix, just a, a standard one. And then he went to Sweden to meet up with Andy, where Andy did all the final mixing and put all the you know, mastering and the polishing and whatnot on it. So... So, yeah, it all came together pretty quickly. A lot of these songs, um, he said some of these songs were left over from earlier uh, Magicka ideas he had that I, potentially, uh, yeah, they potentially would have been on the next album. And, and then you combine that with a bunch of stuff he had written for Kill Ritual where it was too, you know, metal or thrashy for that project. So he was like, well, I'll do something with this. And then when this came to, to be, you know, he's like, I don't want to do a big album. We'll just do eight tracks of just in your face, straight ahead, you know, rock metal and throw it out there. There, there you go, man. Yeah. The, the, like I said, this album, only dark hearts survive. Really good stuff. It's like you picked up exactly where you left off. The only thing is you got a brand new logo, which I really love. It really pops. And uh, the cover art also is, is outstanding. Can you tell us who was able to design your new logo and the album? Yeah, that was uh, a <clears throat> sledgehammer graphics. So, uh, Jobert Mello, he's uh, out of Brazil. He's done uh, a lot of big bands, uh, artwork and graphics and stuff, you know, Primal Fear, Sabaton, bands like that. He, uh, see, we were familiar with him when we parted ways with our old drummer, Henry, Henry Moreno. Henry was the one that designed all of the album uh, covers except for the worship album. He designed the old logos, everything. So, um, after he parted ways uh, for the last tour, we had Joe Bear do some graphics for the website and things at the end. Uh, Steve went on to use him for all the Kill Ritual stuff. I actually used him for the cover of my Skinner, Sleepwalkers album. He did that. Awesome. Uh, so we were both familiar with him. And when the time came to do this, uh, Steve wanted to kind of revamp the logo since Henry was no longer in the band out of respect. Um, and then just, you know, we're, we were both already used to using Joe Bear. So it was kind of a common sense thing to do. It did great work. It really did. And earlier you were talking about touring and uh, you go go big or go home and stuff like that. So I need to ask, have you done any festivals or do you have any festivals coming up? We can spread the word on anything we have, that works. Yeah, we have zero. I, I, I'll, zero? I'll be, I'll be completely transparent right now. As far as a uh, magic, it goes, there is zero plans 
for anything um, on the table. We have not spoken other than um, other than money. You know, we'll, we'll do payouts. You know, for splits on on sales and things from all the past catalog, whatnot. But outside of that, and some discussions about new music being sent my way to start uh, writing to, uh, no touring plans, no uh, nothing at all. So I, uh, I know that I know he's busy. Once again, it's you know it's it's not in the forefront, right? So I know he has his new Kill Ritual album coming out, and he's probably getting ready to start planning a tour for that. My Navayan album is being mastered as we speak. We have a video shoot this month, and we're going to be planning for a big tour in 2020 as well. So, you know, it, unfortunately, to a, a magic of fans, you know, if they're fans of our other bands, they'll be happy. If there's only fans of the Magica, they're going to be a little disgruntled going, oh, I just got to wait for a new album, and that's probably it, you know. I we might do another it. video, you know, maybe another video in the works, you know, mm-hmm. to kind of keep something going in between. But uh, that's that's really all, all we have going on right now for that band. I hear you. And speaking of videos, I was just going to mention about you have the official music video for the Spiteful One and the official yep. lyric video for the the title track, Only Dark Hearts Survive. Would you like to spend time talking about uh, who who was responsible for making these videos as far as sure. producing, directing, and any information? And, and what possibly can you add as far as the future of any uh, new or upcoming official lyric or music videos? Oh, uh, see, we got, uh, let's see here. So the first thing that came out was the uh, the lyric video for the title track. That was uh, set up by uh, Dissonance Productions, who's the label that we're on right now out of the UK. They, uh, I guess it's just part of their strategy plan for promotion, right? So they said they'd like to do a, a lyric video. They had a company they used. Uh, um, I honestly, off the top of my head, can't remember what the name of that company was, but uh, that was all handled by Steve and the label. And then when I saw it, I was like, oh, wow, this is a very cool lyric video. Okay, that's pretty awesome. Um, We had never in the past had an official Imagica um, video, music video. We did try, God, through like three albums ago on the My Bloody Wings album, we met with a a producer and we were going to actually do a video i think for our song hunter's moon and the guy ended up having like a stroke or something and it all fell apart we just we just never uh you know attacked that platform it it was a i think it's kind of a mistake on our part we should have done more videos in the past um so when this came out we all agreed hey let's you know make sure that we get a music video out there we'll shoot the first one um we narrowed it down to a couple of the tracks we figured the spiteful one was a good up-tempo just you know kind of throwback sounding good song to kind of come back with and uh we hit up um a friend of ours named mike sloat he's done videos for everyone from 38 special to machine head and uh he did the video did a great job we had a, a model actress named dusky skies who uh is a friend of mine who i had uh act she was the actress in the video she did fabulous um and uh, Jamie Salazar, who's a great makeup and effects artist, she uh, is another friend of mine that did that worked on the video as well. But uh, it turned out great. It was all shot in one location. Um, it was just it was very efficient and very quick and awesome. We did it in one day and we had it all done by the next week. And we just kind of sat on it for a good month, uh, two months until it was time to release the video. That's always the hard part is when you're done with something, you're like, oh, this is so cool, but you have to sit on it. You can't yeah, really yeah. <laughs> I, I, I can understand that. But it's good to have the video, especially if you, you know, as you're saying or have you, as you said, you're probably not going to be doing many gigs or festivals. So right. at least you have something for your fans to be able to watch and keep them satisfied to a certain point. Yeah, I'm thinking, uh, I'm definitely thinking what we'll do. I mean, I already plan on talking with the guys about doing at least one more video to support this release. Um, maybe to break up. Uh, you always want to have product out there. And it's really hard when it's not a main band of yours. It's like that afterthought where you're like, oh, we got to keep this one kind of in the public eye. Otherwise, people forget about it. So, um, yeah, we'll probably do at least one more video for this album. And then, you know, and right now we we are planning to write and release another one and if it goes as quick as this one did i don't see why we could be releasing an album a year honestly wow 
Well, that's really great news. And, uh, you know, what I hope for, if you are going to be releasing your albums every year or even every other year, I hope that you guys could find the time to go out there and perform it because th this music yeah. is made to be performed live. Yeah, we did two. We only, and, uh, so kind of tying back to what we were talking about earlier, um, when we met up for the first time on his, uh, on the tour with Ice Earth, and, you know, we were drinking and hanging out, we didn't see each other again, the group of us, until we were rehearsing. So the album, the album was done. We didn't see each other through that whole process. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Then we saw each other for the video shoot. So the video shoot was the first time that we were all together in one room in a very long time. And then after that, we didn't see each other again until uh, we were doing rehearsals. We did two special shows, local shows, to uh, support the release of the album. So we did get together and we did do, do two live performances. Um, that was fun. <laughs> um, you know, I can imagine. You have, but it's kind of sad, though, that you, you guys aren't all together all the time. That you probably, if you were, either you, you'd be pulling each other's hair or you'd be out there doing some performances. Yeah, it's honestly, uh, the, 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 it's hard being in a band, right? You got, you got like four or five, six different guys that all have different personalities and stuff. And, uh, some bands that can hang out as best friends all the time and get along great. And then other bands, it's like, yeah, we need space if <laughs> this is going to continue to work. Um, I kind of think the magic is a little that way. Um, we need, we can work together great at arm's distance. <laughs> I, I hear you. I follow you. I understand that. Yeah. yeah so it's uh it's cool. Steve, Steve is a, uh, Steve's great. He's a man. He is just such a character. Uh, he's the first guy that will say, he's like, I'm an asshole. That's what he will say. He will call himself an asshole. And he's like, and he says that that's exactly why we're not going to have another guitar player in the band. <laughs> ah. He's like, we're so this album, you notice we did not bring in another, another guitar player in like we have on all the last, batch of albums we said moving forward one guitar so that's it we're not going to worry about it well the sound is outrageously uh, killer so you really don't need that guitar. maybe yeah, live, maybe alive, always, you might need one but if you're not yeah and it's alive, always been, worry about it. right it's always been that way he uh i mean every album we only had i think on a my bloody wings i think was the only album and maybe a little bit on devil's little sides where we actually had the other guitar player do some recording most of the other albums Steve wrote, recorded everything. We just brought on a second guitar player live. Uh, so it'd sense. probably be something like that, yeah. yeah that makes sense. Mm -hmm. well, well, Norman, I thank you for giving us an update on what's going on with the Magica. How sure. about we do an update on the Hell Scream, being that <laughs> you have a new release on Pure Steel Hate Machine, and uh, you and Dave have been doing yep. this uh, you know, a couple of years now or so. And uh, I have some questions to ask you. Of course, you know what I'm going to ask you. If you have had uh, time to organize the right fit for doing any live gigs with Hellscream, I know the answer is probably no, but I have to ask <laughs> just the same. And, and, uh, and you know what? We got offered a festival appearance out in the uh, Midwest somewhere. I think it was like Iowa or Ohio, something like that. And uh, I brought it to the table. And um, honestly, Dave was like, we just, there's probably not going to be any time. And, um, it's, you know, I thought I was busy, but, you know, he, they were busy with Cage, obviously. I mean, Cage is, is a machine. They, they, they put albums out. They're always doing tours. Um, now, if that wasn't bad enough, now you got three tremors. Exactly. <laughs> um, so that as soon as that kicked off, uh, Hellscream just fell all the way to the bottom of anyone's radar. Um, anything that's promotional, it's me pushing it. Uh, anything that's anything. Um, I only hear from them, Dave, every once in a long while. I honestly, I think this was the last Hell Scream album. So I, I believe uh, pretty much this was it. We just did the two. We did the first one for, for fans of the band, and we didn't even plan on that. We just wanted, to, we just talked about working together, and we got together, you know, and did a few songs, and then it was sounding really good. So we came up with that first album, Made Immortal. That was released very very indie it didn't really get a lot of recognition but those that did hear it thought it was fantastic right so then you know at you know at shows where i would play people would bring up you know hell scream cd here and there for me to sign and then they'd be like oh this is great i'd love to see another one of these and i'd, I'd always tell them i'm like oh, i don't know if there's going to be one this might just be a one-off and then dave 
would get the same thing at cage shows, people coming up to him and wanting an autograph Hell Scream CDs, asking for another one. So this time around, he hit me up and he's like, hey, you know, you want to do another one? I said, sure. But the batch of music I got was um, some of it was great. And other songs he straight up told me were um, were basically like cage leftovers and stuff. So he's like, oh. I don't know. He's like, I don't know if you can do much with these, but go for it. And you know, I I would tear them up and I call it hibachi style, right? I chop them up, and, you know, move them <laughs> around. Like, okay, here's a good structure I can work with. And then we just went back and forth. It took a while. It usually takes us a good, you know, six little over six months to uh, just to, to get through the writing back and forth. And when it was all done. Um, you know, he, it was more of a do it yourself attitude. He kind of mixed and mastered it himself and did some quick engineering and, you know, we got it. We decided we'd at least get a good record deal out of it this time, which we did with pure steel. They, they've been doing phenomenal and, um, actually it got some push. So it's an interesting situation, right? We're both way too busy to really dedicate any time, even discussions to hell screen, but we put out an album that a lot of people seem to like. So it's a tough one, man. I, I really, I, this one is a, I, I really don't see another album, but I said that after the first album. <laughs> right. I, I, th I think the truth is, Norman, you put out any album out there with whoever, and your fans are going to really like it, no matter what. No matter who is with, what kind of metal it is. It could be thrash, progressive, power. I could see you even doing like melodic death metal. Whatever you put out, your fans are going to love it. You know, if, if whether it's with Hellscream or whoever. So if there is more Hellscream music in the future, your fans are going to love it. If there isn't, they're going to ask you for it. And they're going to right. ask you for it until you do deliver it. So the future remains to be seen about Hellscream. But for this album again, though, uh, was it true that Gil Garcia performed all the instruments, drumming too and everything? No. No, no, no. Not no. this time? Okay. No, no. So the, uh, the first Hellscream album, Dave did so a lot of people might not know this. The first Hellscream album, Dave did all the uh, guitar, rhythm guitar, a lot of the lead guitar, and the bass. Um, the drums are all actually recorded, uh, programmed. That's not oh, even. Is that, what, is that what that was? I thought he did drums too. Okay. No, no, those are all those are studio rec programmed drums on the first album. Like I said, this was a very just we were just writing and, you know, we weren't planning on doing a whole lot with it. So, um, and then he did bring in, I think, uh, Casey Trask to do a, a couple solos on maybe one or two songs on that first album. This time around, it, the album, it, it is all musicians that played on it are the same people that play in Cage and the Three Tremors. It's just I'm singing. Oh, it's a, wow. <laughs> yeah, it's all the members. So, it, and so you can understand why with, the whole band is busy with Cage and Three Tremors. They don't have time for Hellscream. <laughs> well, maybe they need to make the Four Tremors and you be part of that as well. Oh, God. <laughs> can, you imagine, can you imagine? I don't know. A lot of people say after hearing the new Hellscream and all the, you know, the high, because really I, I do a lot. I do probably the most high falsetto screaming on this album compared to anything else I've released. So they're like, oh, you could be the Fourth Tremor. Yeah, I don't know about all that, but it it definitely is a very demanding album, and uh, I definitely it's up tempo, tempo. It's in your face. It's like full metal attack on this new release. That's for sure. Yeah, but you could definitely be a fourth tremor because your voice is so different from the rest of them. Oh really, yeah, I'd really it out. is. You have you have a, a different sound to your voice, which could enhance the sound of the tremors for sure. Uh, I, I'm, they're all so they're all very cool. Um, I've uh, I've actually so I I know Sean very well and he's such a very cool guy, very imaginative, very driven, and I very much respect that. And then you have you know um, <clears throat> the singer of Jack Panzer, right? You know that guy. I just saw him at Prague Power in Atlanta, and he is just insane. Uh, <laughs> I, I did get to meet him once, I think, back in like 2000, and uh, he was a, a very genuine person. And that was cool. And then you have Ripper Owens, who I think is the busiest man in metal. Um, I'm trying to stay on his heels on that one. But I've actually never met him. I would love to meet him. I think that would be great. But uh, those are they're all three phenomenal singers. And uh, 
you know, that their that album is just insane. You got all three of them just going balls out all at the same time. So yeah, maybe you could have uh, Ripper Owens be a guest on one of your albums, especially like Skinner or something like that. Maybe I, I you could have, make it happen. I do have a uh, so for me, I have um, you know, I have Navayan obviously, which is going, and then we have the new Skinner album being tracked right now, and then a Magic is there too, right? That kind of is going on. Well, the only other thing I have going on is a project called Elementus, which is, um, it's definitely, it's a solo project with a ton of different musicians, a lot of different musicians on different songs, a uh, big concept record. I got about uh, a double album worth of material right now. And there's a lot of guest singers. So I'm not going to give too much away, but there's a, it's going to be, it's something I'm putting a lot of uh, time and effort into. Um, st- strictly a studio project, but it, it's going to be really cool. So this is you're talking about the the, the next and an upcoming Skinner offering. No, this is called it, it's it's I sing on almost every song, but it, it's called Elementus is the name of the band, the project. So wow, that's something else so, I didn't know about that. Yeah, yeah. no, really have I haven't put out any uh, teasers yet or anything. So I just been writing. I've been writing it for over three years. So it's wow. it's. It's been a lot of work, a lot of cool musicians I'm working with on this one. I thank you for the information on that. I had absolutely <laughs> yeah. no idea, of course. But I also would like to know about what is going on with Skinner and what we could expect next from Skinner. Have you been preparing sure. for the next Skinner release? Yeah. So uh, so we tracked drums. for the, So the, the whole Skinner album is written. Um, so that's done. Uh, I went into the studio with, um, with Noe Luna, same drummer that uh, he plays in Navayan with me and he was on the l- last Skinner album as well. And we went in and we tracked, um, God, I think there's 12 new tracks on the, on the album right now. And um, that was all done back in February. And the reason why nothing's happened since then is the same engineer that is doing the album is, has been doing the new Navayan, which he just wrapped up. So he would ask me, Hey, do you want me to dive into the Skinner stuff? And I'm like, no, 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 do the Navayan first. I want to get that out because that's priority. But uh, all the drums are being uh, mixed right now, and then uh, we'll have all we'll be in full tracking mode with uh, guitars and bass, and then it'll be time for me. So new album's called The Dark Design. Uh, it's got some killer tracks. I got three different guitar players I'm working with on it, um, and the same drummer and bassist I've always had. So Noe Luna, who's in Navayan and Skinner with me, and then of course Jim Pegram, who's in A Magica and Skinner with me. So should be very, very cool. And Skinner will be out there performing, right? Or that's uh thoughts? that's Skinner is strictly by uh request. Um uh, maybe uh, every every once in a while I'll get a a request and they're like, Hey, you know, we want Skinner and then I'm thinking they're talking about like my solo band, but they're just asking me to come and do a guest vocal. Oh. So right, and I'm like, Oh, okay. But yeah, I'm I'm fully open to um Skinner dates, you know, uh, um, here and there and festivals. And um, if somebody wanted, you know, if there was some sort of tour package, I could jump on to do a run of shows or something, you know, little special things like that. I'm definitely down for, I could, you know, I have enough material. So, but I get, I get requests a lot. It just, you know, it, it started off as a band and now it's strictly just a solo project with different members. So, but I am also, I've got, you know, for this new album, I'll be doing at least two music videos. One of them's already being uh, storyboarded uh, for the new Skinner release. So just gonna, you know, we'll see the full full release on a label, uh, music videos, lyric video, and then hopefully maybe some dates here and there if uh, if it all works out. I wish you the best with that. And I, I want to give your Metal Chameleon website, if you want to call it, your official website, <laughs> normanskinner.net. And yep. the reason why I want to give that out there to you, uh, out there to the people, is I, I want to know with all the bands you're associated with, and of course we want to promote and spread the word about merch and to get the CDs and all that. Would that be the place, the best place for fans of Norman Skinner to support Absolutely. the bands? Would that be the place for them to find anything that they want to find as far as CDs, maybe T-shirts, patches, or anything like that? Or do yep. you suggest another? So no, absolutely. Um, it's the only place. Um, in fact, even for the the Magica release, we did all of the pre-orders for North America through my website um, to save people money. You know, if they're here in the states, rather than having to order an import from the UK, 
so to speak. So, um, so yeah, if you're in North America and you want to get a magic of stuff, hit me up. I have, I have all the old shirts, the ones we still have in stock, plus the new designs. We have the CDs and we have some of the old stock CDs that people that were out of stock. We were able to hit up some different, um, vendors that still had some. So, because, you know, a lot of the stuff we had was out of print, but we were able to track down, like, you know, somebody had a shipment of a hundred still sitting on the shelf somewhere. So we were able to secure some of that, which is cool. So I have that on the website, but, um, yeah, I have everything. I've got everything you need for Skinner, Navayan, Hellscream, uh, for fans of this new Hellscream album, it is the first vinyl album that I've uh, officially released. So I've never released any of my other release, uh, albums on vinyl. So the new Hellscream is available on vinyl. You can get it for those collectors. Um, and even, you know, people that want some of my old stuff from bands I'm no longer with, like Machine Called Man, Traumontane, or Dire Apparel, I have back I have back stock of that stuff as well on the website. So that's great news. And uh, would you say that the website's place to go, like we just said, but how about on Facebook? If they approach you on Facebook, it could happen that way as well? Uh, yeah, so uh, of course, all the bands have their own individual Facebook pages. Um, so, for instance, uh, of course, I have I have a personal Facebook page, right? And then I have a Skinner one, and I have a Hellscream one, and right. an Imagine one, right, <laughs> and a Vine right. one. So yeah, that's a little different. But on the website, uh, Skinner.net is the place to go. Then I got right. you. Right, and I definitely want to make sure that. I'm giving you the right info. I'm literally over here pulling it up while I'm talking to you. If you were going to, to go there, it has all the news. It has all the tour dates, all the all the videos. Everything's there. Um, it has the discography. But I think for bands, you really, if you want to get to links to, you know, their individual Instagrams and Twitters and all that stuff, you should probably go to the uh, Facebook accounts and then track them down that way. I got you. Now we covered a lot about you know the bands you're associated with, but I want to make sure that uh, we got to everybody that you're associated with. Are there any other bands that we have yet to discuss that you want to mention? That you no, have been going on? Did, did, did you not go? really. I, I would say uh, so. Obviously, we we really in depth talked about a Magica uh, when we in depth talk, talked about Hell Scream, uh, Navian. We we touched on which is cool. People can um, if. For any of my fans that are unfamiliar with the band uh, Navayan, we did release an awesome music video called The Berserker, and uh, you can find that on YouTube. Check that out. It's it's you know badass, whole, you know Vikings killing each other and stuff. You gotta love it. Um, uh, then aside from that, I also have uh, my Elementus project, which all there really is is a Facebook page with some uh, some stuff on there, lyrics and whatnot. But uh, feel free to like it. Uh, and then that way you you'll see when things get posted so that's a great idea i'm definitely going to do that and uh i thank you once again norman for always being on the show when you are you give us great detail and information about everything you're associated with and this this other project that you're working on when you see the light of day for this release about a year from now or maybe uh it's definitely we have god i have about five more tracks to wrap up. Um, I haven't decided yet if I want to do a one album release and just do the first half of the album and then do the second half or release it as a big double. Um, I'm starting to lead towards the, uh, just doing the first half just to kind of get it going. But um, I will be doing a single. Um, I don't, I just, I don't want to offer up too much information. One of my favorite singers is a, going to be hopefully singing on the track with me so that'll be very exciting but uh the elementus project is a it's a concept that's an ongoing ongoing concept cd it's a uh we'll call it a vampire supernatural kind of storyline oh yeah and, wow. yeah and, and the the plan is i already have two albums that are being tracked and written when that's done i'm just going to continue the storyline and it's just going to keep going and going and going till i'm bored with it i guess <laughs> or i get old and i can't sing anymore i don't know i don't see that happening but i, <laughs> I do I, I do want to put it out there that if the album does come out let's say around this time next year or even the year after i would love for you for you to come back to the show and we can talk about uh -oh. this music 
Definitely we will have uh, we will have Navian and Skinner albums out by then. Who knows with the way Steve works, you could even have a new Magic as well. So I'm always I always love being on your show, Dave. So yeah, well, we well, always have something to talk about. Like it's not just one offering; it's usually no. two or three <laughs> or four, maybe. But yeah, something. yeah, yeah. We we don't get to do this. Uh, you know, it's a few years in between, but we always have all new material to talk about, which is always great. Absolutely. That's why I like it. <laughs> yeah, I want to I want to thank you for catching everybody up to speed. I think you did a great job with that. Uh, the only thing I would like to know now is if uh, you would like to say anything out there to your fans that are tuning in that, that have been supporting you since, we want to say, from the very beginning, or even the, uh, the new and upcoming fans of Norman Skinner fronted metal. Anything you'd like to say to them? Yeah, I mean, for for those that have been, I mean, God, for anyone even tuning in just because they see my name, it's like thank you. You know, uh, they're the ones that have been able to, you know, make it so I can continue doing this. So thank you for the ongoing support. Um, all my all my fans know. I always say I don't have fans; I have friends. You know, I'm, I'm down to earth guy, so I I really really appreciate it. Um, for people that are hearing this for the first time, all I got to say is, you know. Um, give me a shot go and listen to some of my music and see if it's to your liking. Um, I will say though, and I think you can back me up on this, Dave, not each project sounds a little bit different. So you might want to listen. Yeah. If you listen to hell scream, you're like, Ooh, that's not really my thing. You know, maybe go and listen to a magica or Navaya and, and you know, it might be more to your liking. So I never do the same thing in each band. This is true. And you got to check out all the music of Norman Skinner front metal. And uh, I'm sure you'll find something that really catches you. You might like it all. You might love it all. But unless you check it out, you're not going to know. So please do that. Exactly. <laughs> all right, Norman. As always, it's a pleasure to have you on the Metal Meltdown. And I, I wish you overwhelming success with all the bands you have. And uh, I'm looking forward to future possibilities of continued support of your bands and interviews. Uh, but for now, let's go crank up some more. Norman Skinner fronted metal and crank it up loud. <laughs> Thank you, brother. <laughs>